Thanks, you guys. Um, so as Mary said, I work for the Johnson County um, Conservation Department. And um, most of my work is in Camp Park. How many of you, have you guys been to Camp Park before? Let me see a show of hands. Okay, it's a really neat park and I really love my job and, and the work that I get to do out there. Um, and I would encourage you guys, by the way, um, and your leaders to consider coming out to Kent Park because we do programs with, with groups of kids all the time, daycare, uh, camps, summer camps, and so forth. So by all means, uh, consider us. Consider coming out and uh, having us do some programming for you. Um, so the library asked me, um, asked us, our, our department, to do a presentation in connection with the summer reading program whose theme is health and wellness. So um, since I was the one who had to do it, <laughs> I decided I would go with, uh, with one of my loves, which is animals, and talk about animal health and wellness, and especially talk about uh, what you might call animal athletes or the athletic abilities of animals, especially the animals of Iowa. Now, we're going to talk about some non-Iowa animals, okay? But most of my focus will be on, on Iowa critters, and we'll try to bring what we know about uh, animals and their athletic abilities always back home to our home state of Iowa. How many of you guys watch Wild Kratts? Everybody watches Wild Kratts now to the point where when we have groups out to Kent Park, they often know as much as we do about animals, okay? Which is great. I'm really happy that, uh, that those guys are teaching you guys a lot about, about animals and about nature. Um, I bet you somebody in this room, maybe numerous somebodies, knows, and let me see a show of hands here, okay? what the fastest land animal is in the world. The fastest land animal. And the reason we're raising our hands is so that we don't blurt it out, okay? <laughs> yeah. This gal right here. The cheetah, right? The cheetah. And cheetah, real common in Iowa? Yes or no? No, right? Have you ever seen one in Iowa City? or in the woods outside of Iowa City or the prairie. No, the cheetah does not live in Iowa, does not even live in the United States. Where does the cheetah live? Hands. In Africa, right? So it's the world's fastest animal, which is really cool, but we got to figure out what Iowa's fastest animal is. Now, um, the second fastest animal in the world is actually this guy right here. Anybody know what that is? Raised hand? Yes. It looks a lot like a gazelle, okay? This, not very many of us have heard of this guy before. Yeah. It's the pronghorn, okay? Sometimes called the pronghorn antelope, which technically is wrong because it's not really an antelope, but the pronghorn is the second fastest animal in the world. And, oh, by the way, the cheetah, how fast can it go? Raised hand? Yeah. Yes. 70 miles an hour, right? That's as fast as the speed limit on the interstate. So your car, right, go, I mean, a cheetah can go as fast as your car on the interstate. Uh, anybody know how fast this guy can go? This guy can go 60 miles an hour, okay? So that's almost as fast as the speed limit on the interstate. Now, here's a mystery for you, okay? And it's a mystery that biologists in the United States uh, have tried to, tried to figure out for years, okay? This creature, the pronghorn, lives in America, right? It lives in uh, the Western United States and Canada. Here's the thing. This creature is so fast that it can many times over, right, beat any predator that would try to chase it. It's, it's, it's actually too fast, right? 
it actually is way faster than it has to be. It's way faster than it needs to be to outrun any North American predator. And biologists for years have wondered why. Why does this animal have so much extra speed? Because usually in nature, an animal is only as fast as it has to be. It doesn't have extra speed over and above what it needs to survive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's true. It doesn't have any encumbrances, right? But the reason that biologists think this guy is so fast, can we go back a slide? Anybody anybody think they might know? Yeah. That's an excellent theory. But the reason biologists have figured out why this pronghorn is so fast is because there used to be cheetahs in North America. And that pronghorn evolved to elude cheetahs. The cheetah went extinct, but the pronghorn retained the speed that it needed to outrun this guy. Isn't that fascinating? Now, the pronghorn is still not an Iowa creature, OK? It does live in North America and nowhere else, by the way. But it does not live in Iowa. Its range comes close to Iowa. I think it gets about as close as, as close to the border of South Dakota, if you know your geography, but not quite, not quite into Iowa. So. A uh, couple more slides. This guy used to live in Iowa. Anybody know what this is? Yeah. Yes. What is this creature? It's in the deer family, right? What, what, do, you, what do you think it might be? Good guess. It's an elk. OK? It's an elk. And this guy can run 45 miles per hour, OK? So we had the cheetah, 70, the pronghorn, 60, and the elk, which I believe is 45 miles per hour. I've got to check my facts here. But still, now this is an animal that used to live in Iowa. And there are some populations of elk in Iowa, but they're like on farms, right? So they're domesticated. They're not really wild. So really, what's the fastest wild animal in Iowa? That's what we have to try to figure out. And as far as I've been able to tell, um, it's this guy. Looks like a wolf, right? Is there another animal that looks similar to a wolf? Yes. The coyote, right? The coyote, and it can run 43 to 45 miles per hour, so just about as fast as that elk, OK? And I was hoping I could bring you guys a coyote today, but, and I, I tried to catch one this morning, but I just couldn't do it. But I do have, from Kent Park, right, our CEC building, our Conservation Education Center, the CEC building at Kent Park, I do have the skin of a coyote. <laughs> and, and so I want you guys to know, OK, you never kill an animal. We people who work in the conservation department, we would never kill an animal. But sometimes animals will get hit by a car or something. And a person who really cares about animals and wants others to learn about those animals We'll collect the dead animal, and we will get the animal skinned. Sometimes we have the animal stuffed. Have you ever seen like, you know, animals that have been stuffed by a taxidermist in a museum? Okay. So that is a coyote fur, and this 
fur, you guys, is amazing. It's so soft and nice. And I'm going to give you guys a chance to touch the fur later at the end of the... At, does it have rabies? If it does, it doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> I'll let you touch this at the end of our program today, okay? Do you have a question? What? Yeah, there's a lot of dead animals around, right? And if, if we can use their bodies for education purposes, you know, what a wonderful thing, right, to be able to share with you guys. This is a red fox, and they're pretty fast too, about as fast as a coyote, but they can't run for nearly as long a distance. They can't maintain that speed for very long at all. Okay. Another question? That's a coyote, yeah. Up there, yeah. Thank you. I, I'll, uh, I'll take that advice. I'll never, ever try to catch another coyote. Two more comments right here. Why did, the, why did the pronghorn not adapt to not having the cheetah around? Well, adaptation is an ongoing process. And if you, this is, gets into a lot of science, right? A lot of hardcore science. But there's probably a price that that pronghorn pays for being so fast. And over time, right, it will probably lose that ability. I mean, thousands and thousands of years, it will probably become slower and slower because nature doesn't like to give extra stuff to its creatures. And she will probably take away the additional speed that the, that the pronghorn has at some point in the distant future. One more question or comment. There's a lot of dead animals out there, right? And another one, another animal that you're likely to see in our part of the woods is, is the deer. And this is the hide of a deer. And a deer is pretty fast too, okay? They're, they're not as fast as a coyote. Um, they can run about 30 miles an hour. But that's still nothing to sneeze at, right? That's faster than a car is legally supposed to drive in a lot of parts of Iowa City. So that's the deer skin. And you guys can touch that later, as well as a couple of deer ears, if you want to look at those later. So when it comes to birds, okay, what are the fastest birds, okay? And does anybody know what this one is? Okay, this is a, it's called a peregrine falcon, okay? And this bird does live in Iowa. At one time, this guy was completely extinct in Iowa, but they've been re-released, okay? And now they're living in our state again, okay? So there's a... By the way, you hear a lot of stories about how animals are going extinct, but there are some animals that we have brought back from the verge of extinction, and this is one of them. This guy can dive at the speed of over 200 miles an hour. But in a way, that's kind of cheating, right? Because in order to dive, all you got to do is fly up real high and then fall. 
But what about birds, right, flapping their wings like this? The fastest bird um, in level flight is a bird called the merganser, at least the fastest one in Iowa. And this guy actually, I think, only travels through Iowa. It doesn't live here year-round, I don't think. Uh, and it can fly, level flying, uh, at about 80 miles an hour, which is pretty fast. That's faster than cars are allowed to go on the interstate. And the canvasback duck uh, is pretty fast as well. I think it's like 50, maybe? Um, no, 72. I stand corrected. So 72 miles per hour for the canvasback, 80 for the merganser. So here's an interesting thing, you guys. Um, when you think about things like jumping, what would you think would be the highest jumping animal, or what type of animal would be the highest jumping animal? Yeah. Yes. Kangaroo? OK. You guys, the highest jumping animals, there's different ways to think about that, right? Like a gazelle can jump 10 feet in the air. But that's not that much higher than the gazelle itself. The animals that can jump really, really high relative to their own size are insects. And number one is the flea, believe it or not, OK? And it, does, the fla does the flea live in Iowa? Just ask your dogs and cats, right? <laughs> Another insect that lives in Iowa that can jump pretty high is the click, the click beetle. So let's bring our voices down a little bit, you guys. So here's a really interesting fact, OK? The highest jumping human being can jump maybe over himself. Do we have a pointer? Over himself uh, and half of another person, OK, if you want. Or maybe like one of us adults with one of you little guys on our shoulders. That's the highest that the highest jumping person can jump. Fleas can jump over 150 other fleas. They can jump 150 times their body height. Isn't that amazing? Similar kind of thing with weightlifting, OK? The, the world champ at weightlifting is the rhinoceros beetle. And they can lift 150 times more than themselves. So, right, a human being, the strongest human being, could hold four and a half people on his shoulder, okay? <laughs> or lift four and a half people, which would be like four adults and one of the little kids in here, probably, right? But the rhinoceros beetle could hold 150 other rhinoceros beetles up in the air. That's pretty cool, huh? So insects are really amazing. And they have pretty much, you'd have to say, super superhero type powers. Boy, it would sure be neat if I had some living animals, wouldn't it? Yeah. Man, I should have brought in a living animal. Oh, wait a minute. When we, by the way, you guys, when we think about. <laughs> when, when we think about athletic abilities. We usually think of things like strength and speed and jumping ability, but if they held a contest, right, for the world's stinkiest animal, that guy would probably win it.
and that's an important thing to have in mind, right? When we talk about athletic ability, How athletic, how athletic is the turtle? You've heard the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? And the turtle does end up winning that race, right? Only because the rabbit is lazy in that story. And turtles, yeah, okay, they're pretty slow, to be honest with you. But you should see this guy go after a worm. And another thing, you guys, he's probably not as slow as you would think. Does anybody know what kind of turtle this is? Not now. Well, actually, you guys won't be able to touch the turtle. There is an animal you might be able to touch later. Do you know what kind of turtle? What is it? It's actually an ornate box turtle. Now, what other abilities does this guy have besides being able to eh, walk at a pretty good speed? Yeah. What? So I'm not sure if these guys spend much time in the water, but a lot of turtles do. These guys, ornate box turtles, number one, are very rare. They're endangered species, and they live most of their life on land. They don't spend much time at all in the water. They can hide in their shell, right? If there were an Olympic contest for ability to hide from predators, this guy might win it. What else can they do? Based on this guy's claws, what do you imagine? Scratch, Scratch yeah. Dig, right? These guys dig, these guys dig burrows way back. They tend to live on sandy soil and they dig really deep burrows. I'm going to put him away because he's rearing his head back, which means he's nervous. Is there more turtles in there? Just the one turtle. And when we're done, we get to look at the furs. We can touch the furs, and we can look at the animals. Here's another animal that we have at our Conservation Education Center out at Kent Park. Yeah, so remember how when I had the turtle out, if we keep our voices down, it'll keep these guys from being so scared, okay? Mary, could you give me like a little dab of water? Like pour a little dab of water in your hand and pour it over this guy? Anybody know what this creature is? Yes. It's a salamander. It looks like a lizard, right? But it's actually a salamander. And a salamander is an amphibian. Anybody tell me any other amphibians? Do you know of any, any other amphibians? Um, that, if you pour water on it, just pour it on top. Oh. Um, there's like these things that make you go under his mouth. Okay. Does anybody know of any other 
amphibians, yeah. Frogs. Frogs, right? And any others over there in the green shirt? Just uh, what? Caterpillar, good guess, good guess. There's an animal that's a lot like a frog. Yes, toad. And, and amphibians, you guys, um, breathe through both their mouths, through their lungs, and through their skin. So their skin has to be moist all the time. And you can't have like anything on your hands, like soap scum or um, hand sanitizer residue, right? Because all those yucky chemicals can be absorbed into, into the amphibian's body. And this guy's pretty slow, right? Kind of like the turtle was. But again, like a turtle, if I were to put a worm in this guy's pen, you would see him move pretty fast to get that worm. This guy has, ooh, has other abilities as well. He kind of jerked kind of fast right then, which is not typical. <laughs> he usually is pretty mellow. Um, another ability that this guy has, he's kind of a biathlete, right? He can do stuff on land and in the water. He can swim in the water. And in fact, salamanders every year go to the water to lay eggs, just like toads do. Toads live out of the water, but they lay their eggs in the water. Um, other things. He's a good digger, right? And in fact, we don't see him that often because salamanders, and this is a tiger salamander. Salamanders tend to stay buried all I sure wish I had another critter that was fun to look at. Oh, yeah, there's a box, isn't there? Shoo. I didn't notice that box. There might be something in this pillowcase. It's not a hawk. Anybody ever seen this type of snake before? Does anybody know what kind of snake it is? Yes. Good guess. It does have a pattern that looks a lot like a rattlesnake, but thank God it isn't one. <laughs> yes. It's a fox snake. I recognize you. Did you come out to the CEC recently? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's fox snake. And snakes have a lot of athletic ability too. They are pretty fast. They can get around pretty well. And there's, 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 there's one Olympic contest that this guy would probably win hands down with anything its size, and that is wrestling, okay? Because, do you know about this? This is, different snakes use different techniques to get their prey, to get their food, to kill and, and eat their prey. Some of them bite their prey and kill it that way. There's another way that snakes sometimes kill their prey. They wrap around it right, and squish it to death, basically. So, 
so this guy knows some wrestling moves that even the most champion wrestler would envy, okay? And he can wrap around and completely suffocate his prey. I wonder, I wonder if he would suffocate me and eat me. Let's keep our voices down so we don't make him nervous, okay? Especially when he's on my neck. Um, there's another, if, if there were an Olympic event for ability to swallow really big things, this guy would win that one as well, okay? Because this guy, guess what this guy eats? A mice. And this guy can swallow a whole mouse at once. They unhinge their jaws and swallow an entire mouse all at once. Yeah. We don't consider them pets. Well, because we want to use them as educational tools in a way, and we don't want to become too close to them, right? We want them to be uh, not that kind of a thing, okay? But rather... Snock, fox snakes, excuse me, and this is the western fox snake, are pretty common, pretty common in Iowa. And does anybody know why the fox snake is called a fox snake? Because it looks like a fox? This, this snake is not venomous. It's not poison. It, it does not have a poisonous bite. Again, it kills its victim by strangling it, <clears throat> which it feels like it's trying to do to me right now. Um, and it, it has some defenses to try to protect itself. One is, and if there were an Olympic event for imitation, this guy would do pretty well at that as well, because this guy will rattle its tail. Why? It's trying to impersonate a rattlesnake. Why? Predators are scared of rattlesnakes, so they'll leave this guy alone because they think it's a rattler. Another thing that this guy will do is, in de to defend itself is pee. <laughs> and the pee from this snake smells pretty bad, so don't get it scared, okay, while it's around me. Um, the pee from this snake smells pretty bad, and people, people think... The early pioneers felt like the urine smelled like fox urine. So that's why they called it the fox snake. Well, there's a place <laughs> where it releases its, its pee on the underside of the snake. Do you, know, do you guys know how snakes smell? With their tongue, right? That's why this snake is continually sticking out its tongue. Yeah. Um, my friend, I know, well, my dad's friend has a lot of corn snakes for pets. And one of them likes me, but the other one didn't think that I wanted. Uh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Some snakes have really tiny teeth that can't really hurt you very much, like a garter snake. I've been bitten many times by garters, and they don't, they don't really hurt. Let's listen, to, let's listen to this young man.
wow, playing dead, okay. That's another technique, right? Yes, did you have a question or a comment? You want to... Um, so you guys, most of the snakes in Iowa are not poisonous. There are some parts of Iowa that have rattlesnakes. One is the northeast corner of Iowa has the timber rattlesnake. And southeast Iowa has something called the Massasauga rattlesnake. But the Massasauga is, is a poisonous snake, but it um, is apparently pretty gentle and skittish and doesn't want much to do with people, so it'll avoid you. But we don't really have uh, poisonous snakes around here. Every once in a while, a rattlesnake might turn up around here, so it's best to be, you know, give snakes their space. But generally speaking, there aren't, you know, very many, if any at all, poisonous snakes around here. A bull snake? Yeah. Yeah, those are pretty common in Iowa as well. Yes? Did it come out of the pile? Because they love brush piles, right? Snakes really like brush piles. Um, does anyone have questions? Uh, we've heard a lot of stories. I like your stories. Does anyone have questions about anything? Yeah. The first time, oh, I was probably in first grade or something. Um, and I was, you know, trying to play around with garter snakes. I caught snakes all the time when I was a kid. I was just pretty crazy about wildlife then like I am now. So I'm really just kind of a big kid, to be honest with you. Yes? Um, so I'm, like, really into snakes as well. So, like, I don't really see much snakes, you know, in my own backyard. Well, I'll, you know what, guys? I have learned that there is a lot more nature around than you might think. Um, and if you come out to Kent Park, we can teach you some techniques for observing nature. One thing that I would recommend is, are you interested in insects at all? You know, another thing is that you might not think you're interested in insects, but once you start learning a little bit about them, they're really fascinating. And you can take something called a sweep net and just go back and forth, even if you don't see a bug on your lawn, just sweep it back and forth over and over and over again, and then close it up at the top. And when you look down in that net, you're gonna see bazillion little insects that are just fascinating. A whole, they just, every possible weird, some of them look like little space alien creatures. They're so fascinating and so diverse. So that's a possibility. Go to the parks in town, like Hickory Hill Park, which, have you been there before? It's more of like a wilderness park. And so you're good, you may see some things in there and hear some things like, like some owls and neat things like that. So that's another suggestion. Have your parents bring you out to Kent Park for sure. Lake McBride. Um, and part of it is kind of learning techniques for how to observe wildlife. Right? Being really quiet and that kind of thing. One more question. Well, you tell me. What, what would you say? I'd say more than two feet.
could I have my staff come up <laughs> and help me? So here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to line up in a single file line on that side of the room, and my staff will let you touch the furs. We, we can look at the salamander and the turtle. Please do not touch the turtle, okay? After you, after you touch the furs and after you look at the other animals, you may touch the snake, okay? But Mary... Mary is really dying to touch the snake. 